welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor at Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of our entire church family, our church board, the session, and our deacons, I would like to welcome you uh, to this great cloud of witnesses. Although the pandemic has separated us spatially, we are nonetheless together and one spiritually because the Holy Spirit is in the house. The Bible promises us that where two or more are gathered, that God is with us. And we know, thanks to the promise and the gift of the Holy Spirit, that Christ is indeed in our midst. So, Please know that you are welcome. I look forward to welcoming you in person as conditions permit uh, as we make it through this pandemic. So let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Please join with me now in our call to worship. How precious is the steadfast love of the Lord. All people may take refuge in the shadow of God's embrace. Christ is the foundation of all life. In Christ, we behold the light of God. Come, let us worship the splendor of God's majesty. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. <laughs> confession. This is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will forgive their evil deeds and remember their sins no more. In penitence and faith, let us now confess our sins to Almighty God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, we so often forget what you expect of us, yet your commandments are clear. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not worship idols. You shall not misuse God's name. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. 
Do not kill, commit adultery, steal, bear false witness, or covet that which belongs to your neighbor. Merciful God, forgive our sins. Help us return to your way of right relationships and true life. By your Holy Spirit, move within us so that we may embody Christ's teaching of fulfilling your law by loving you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead, and by grace we are saved through him. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, open our hearts to your word this day. Show us the way we need to follow. Tell us the truth we need to hear and grant us the life we need to live. Amen. Our scripture today is Psalm 72. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people and give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies licked, lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings bow down before him and all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all day long. May there be an abundance of grain in the land, May it wave upon the tops of the mountains. May its fruit be like Lebanon. And may people blossom in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. His fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him. May they pronounce him happy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, son of Jesse, are ended. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This psalm, Psalm 72, is a blessing for the king. It's also a job description for the king. Psalm 72 asks God to give the king the qualities the king is supposed to have. We don't have kings anymore, but we do have political leaders. What if God wants in a king then is also what God wants in a political leader now? If that is the case, then Psalm 72 is a timeless standard for all leaders, and it's a good guide for us as we choose our leaders. Psalm 72 prays for the oversight of a godly leader, and it prays for that oversight to be one of justice, righteousness, and concern for the poor. The psalm begins by praying, O God, grant the king, our leader, the one who is in authority, grant that person, O God, your justice and your righteousness. In other words, God, enable our leaders to do what they're supposed to do. Give our political leadership your justice, your commitment to do what is right. And give them your righteousness, your inherent goodness. Help us, the people who are led by your godly leader, to flourish and prosper. And help those who are struggling receive the extra care they need to flourish. Psalm 72 asks God to give us leadership that brings justice to the poor, that defends the poor, that delivers the needy, and that opposes those who afflict the needy. Verses 12 through 14 say that the godly leader cares for the most vulnerable and protects them from those who would prey upon them. Psalm 72 asks for heaven's blessings and our prayers for God's good leader to have health, honor, happiness, prosperity, and peace. Psalm 72 asks God to prosper us as well so that we flourish, so that we are protected from foreign enemies and from predatory neighbors. Psalm 72 says that a good leader is like rain that causes us, the people, like grain in the field, to blossom and flourish. Psalm 72 ends with praise for the God from whom all blessings flow. In other words, may God be blessed. May our leader be blessed. And may we be blessed as well. This is a good vision. It shows what we can expect when our leaders lead us by following God and by honoring God's ways. Now, no human leader has ever fully lived up to this vision. No society, no political party, and no nation has either. The history of the kings in the Bible is mostly a story of their failure to honor God's will and way. Nonetheless, this good vision set forth in Psalm 72 should still be the goal for our nation and all nations and every leader from county commissioners on up. Currently, there's a lot of cynicism and despair and division, and rightly so. 2020 has been brutal. There's social unrest, economic trouble, and a worldwide pandemic. But God is still at work. God's vision still holds true. God is still raising up good men and good women 
to lead us. They're all imperfect. They have differing visions on how to promote the common good. But they have all offered to serve. And for that, they all deserve our thanks and our prayers. As you exercise your right to vote, you fulfill your civic duty to care for our community, state, and nation. And you also fulfill your heavenly duty to care for God's world by securing good leadership to care for it and us. Keep Psalm 72's good vision before you as you choose who is worthy to lead. May God bless all who are in positions of authority according to the words and wisdom of this psalm. May God guide us as we vote, and may God bless America. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We come, O Lord, to worship you and to pray for your world. O God, we pray for all who farm, that as the harvest continues, you will grant them uh, good weather for harvesting, and that you will bless the, this land and uh, their labor to feed us all. We pray, O oh Lord, for our world. We read about all the natural disasters that are happening and uh, the pandemic that is continuing. We read in the headlines and we see on the news every day all that is wrong with the world. But Lord, help us to remember that you are at work beneath and beyond the headlines, O oh God, to bring about your vision for our world to bring about your healing, to restore your peace, and to knit us all together in the one family of your care and your love. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to remember all of the good things in the world, all of the good blessings that are around us, and all of the good people who are quietly faithful at work to make this world a good one with you and for others. Help us to be counted in their number and to join their ranks by doing what we can do to be a blessing to you, to our world, to our neighbors, and to those uh, around us, especially those who uh, for have no one to pray for them, who have been forgotten and discarded. Oh God, we pray that you would pour out your grace upon them. We ask that you would pour out your grace upon all who are in positions of authority. We pray for our President Donald, for his health and for our First Lady's health and for their speedy full recovery. We pray for our Governor Eric and for our Mayor Todd. Lord, we ask that you would lead all leaders, that you would help them to get us through this trying time, that you would help uh, people on every political side and point in the spectrum to have good hearts, that they may work together, that they may advance the common good, and that our nation may be a blessing to other nations and our community a place of welcome for all. O oh God, we ask your grace for all who are hungry, for all who are hurting, for all who are in need. O oh God, may your compassion flow through our love so that they have all that they need to live. Help us to participate in that blessing today. O oh God, we ask your blessings upon all who are ill. We pray that you would strengthen all who are ill in body and in mind and spirit. We pray that you will restore what is damaged, that you will strengthen what is infirm, and that you will knit back together what uh, needs to be healed 
Lord, so that your wholeness and healing and life may abound. We ask, Lord, for you to bless all who are afflicted in mind and spirit, that you would relieve them from the oppression of their mind, and that you might transform their confusion and their despair and their emptiness, that, Lord, you would transform it so there is clarity and hope and peace and joy. O oh God, we ask your blessings upon all who grieve that you might mend their broken hearts and that, Lord, you might grant them that they may walk with you each day into uh, a brighter grace and, uh, and greater health and love. O oh God, we ask your blessings upon our schools, upon all who teach and work in our schools, and for all students, Lord, that you would help them to grow during this time. We ask you to be with all who are business owners and all laborers, that you would help us to find ways to uh, make it through these tough economic times so that um, everyone has what they need to live. We pray, O oh Lord, for those ministries beyond our congregation that are housed in our facility. We ask your grace upon the recovery groups that meet here, that you might free all who are addicted from the bonds of addiction and allow them to live clean and sober and joyous lives. We pray your grace upon child and family counseling that all who seek to be healed may find your healing through their care. We pray your grace upon the fish clothing pantry that uh, our community through that ministry may supply clothing to those who are in need. And we ask your grace for the Montessori school, for all who work there and its students, that Lord, uh, they may continue to become who you created them to be. Oh God, we would ask your blessing also upon these individuals for Alger, for Kevin and Laura, for Lily's friend Dakota, for David and Sheridan, for Bill's friend John, for Jim and Rob, for Becky and Jim, for Jim and Virginia, for Betsy, Nanette, Roger, Betty and Dick, Linda and Bill, for Marty and Peg, and Alan, O oh God, we ask your richest blessings this day and always. And Lord, we would ask your favor and grace upon these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, Just sent 
distance by the dim and flaring lamps His day is marching on Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah His day is marching on Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy let us live to make men free while God is marching on glory glory Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge us all to remember that God's truth is marching on, that God is here, that God's good people are at work now. They always have been, they always will be, because God's grace is with us always to make this a good world. Let's act with them, and let's add our energy, imagination, intelligence, and love, trusting that as we do, God's kingdom will come, and God's peace, God's grace, God's shalom shall embrace us all. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift you up and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.